Hello everybody, welcome back to the table. Today we are taking a look at the Monterey Bay Knives Slayback Flipper. And so the Slayback is not a new design entirely to Monterey Bay Knives, but this latest iteration has some really cool features in it that I wanted to point out and might make it worth a pickup on your part. So the standout feature of this newest titanium handled Slayback is the ZDP 189 steel blade. So what we have here is a Sanmai ZDP-189 blade, and when I even think of the ZDP-189, that is a blade steel that I have not heard about in a very long time. And so maybe it's a little bit more uncommon nowadays, but this particular one is very nicely made, very nicely done, and it's a Sanmai, which means that the ZDP steel is sandwiched between two layers of a 420J2. Um, and it's really kind of cool because when you look at the blade, you can see the lamination lines, which really kind of add a visual flair to this knife. That it, it already looks very nice because the slave or the swayback style blade is already very visually eye catching. But now we have this lamination line on both sides of the blade, which really do add some pop to it. It comes in a really nice satin finish, and with most of the blades that Monterey Bay Knives makes, it's very subdued in markings, so we do have the Monterey Bay Knives logo on one side, and then on the spine, spine of the blade, we have the maker's name, Ray Laconico. So he is the designer of the knife, and so this is a really nice production version of the Slayback. And so we have titanium handles, full titanium, and this one happens to be a liner lock. So this is actually my first liner lock from Monterey Bay Knives. So feel free to check out the lock up right here, nice and early where it's supposed to be. Same thing with the centering, is is perfect right out of the box, so I expected honestly no less than that. The pocket clip that we have on this knife is the standard Monterey Bay Knives style pocket clip and it looks to be interchangeable with many of their other knives. Um, so this one you could also pick up the Tamascus clip and so we can see a real quick comparison between the standard clip and the Tamascus that I have on my old guard right here. And so it's kind of nice, you know, if I had chosen to I could switch out the clips for whatever knife I'm, you know, going to be carrying. And uh, it adds a nice, you know, another visual pop, another visual appeal to the blade. So really, really cool knife. I love the design. I love the original when it came out. If I remember correctly, I think the original iteration of this knife was a non-locking flipper in the same vein as the EWC that we have right here. And so um, this particular version being a liner lock, it, the action's really nice. It does run on bearings. Very, very flippy, very fun to actuate. And in a way, it, it's kind of a step above some of his brothers here on the table because our two uh, old guard, mini old guard and full size old guard, they are frame locks, which can make them slightly harder to actuate. And in terms of just fidgeting with the knife, playing with the knife, opening, closing, opening, closing, whenever you hold a frame lock in a certain position, if you are putting pressure on the lock bar, it can uh, make it the knife harder to flick open. And of course with the liner lock, that does not become an issue. So really cool to play with this knife, but of course the main standout feature is this blade, ZDP 189, as far as I know, still is a very standout super steel. Uh, the hardness of this one their stating is between a Rockwell hardness of between uh, 66 to 67. And uh, the ZDP, I mean, they, they use a Sanmai technique, which of course sandwiches the ZDP steel between the 420. And um, they do that, I, I'm, it's my opinion and it's my thought that they do it because the thinness of the blade makes it easier to machine the ZDP. Um, and having that outside steel clad over it you know, gives you a thicker overall knife. But what's really cool about that process is when you look on the spine of the blade right here, if you look really closely in the light, you can actually see the thinner layer of the ZDP 189, and you can kind of see how it's sandwiched between the outer layers of the 420 J2. So that's really cool. So that way you get a ZDP 189 blade um, but it's going to be a regular thickness just like any other pocket knife. But that being said, the overall thickness of the blade itself is still very thin, very nice in pocket. 
Um, it's not a heavyweight knife. The overall length of this knife is seven inches overall, and it has the blade length of three inches. Uh, also very lightweight, comes in a little tiny bit over three ounces. They advertise 3.1, and I got a little less on my scale, but it is um, lighter than either of the old guards that we have on the table, so uh, coming in right at about the three ounce mark. So very, very easy to carry, very easy and fun to play around with. I love the lines. I love the style. Um, we'll do some side-to-side -side comparisons between these, these four knives on the table. So first off, let's compare the Slayback Flipper to the Everywhere Carry, which is a non-locking knife, but it's also same overall length, three inch blade, seven inches overall. Of course, you can tell carbon fiber design makes that one the lightest weight on the table, uh, but we do have the same pocket clip, as you can see. You know, same very simple design style with the uh, MBK logo and the Laconico name on the spine. So I love seeing the visual comparison between these knives. Whoever Monterey Bay Knives uses to make their knives overseas, they're doing a pretty darn good job. And uh, Monterey Bay Knives themselves tend to do a pretty good job on the quality control themselves, so they're not sending out knives that are openly, you know, defective. Um, so we can see the comparison as well. Let's put it next to the mini Old Guard. And so again, very similar size. So we have 3-inch blade, 7-inch overall length, same pocket clip. You know, all three of these knives... Comparing them, they are within the same wheelhouse. And even the full-size Old Guard, it's a bit longer, but weight-wise, none of these knives are heavyweights. They're all very easy to actuate, very uh, pleasurable to use, very nice to collect. I love the simple titanium finish on the titanium handle knives. And even the carbon fiber, you know, just has a nice pop to it. So it sounds like I'm gushing over the knife because, of course, straight thing out, first thing out of the box, it, it's a very positive first impression. Um, the Slayback Flipper here, though, what it came with, just like the Mini Old Guard, it did come with an extra set of hardware. So should any of the parts wear and tear or be lost during disassembly, you easily will be able to find a replacement right on hand. So you don't necessarily have to send this knife in in case you know, you're know you taking it apart to clean it and the stop pin flies across the room. You'll have that part here on hand to fix it yourself. Uh, but one thing you will notice, and it's one thing they actually mention on their website selling this knife, um, a disclaimer for the ZDP 189 blade. It is Sanmai, and you can see the lamination marks on either side of the blade. And they, they will openly state that there's a good chance they're not going to be perfectly symmetrical on either side of the blade. So if you're a very um, perfectionist, and they have to be perfectly equal, you know, they're openly saying, hey, just due to the process, you know, we can't guarantee that they're going to be even. And on mine, one side is slightly wider than the other. Does that really detract from the design for me? No, not at all. They wouldn't have had to even mention that. I just understand, you know, that's just the way the process is. And it's totally cool to see it this way, you know. And so this outer clouding of 420 J2, from what I've read, it, it will be not quite as uh, scratch resistant. So if you do carry and use this, you can expect to see some really honest wear on the knife. And that's, you know, up to your preference, whether you carry and use this or whether you keep this as a collector item. Um, of course, all these knives on the table are designed to be used and carried every day. So don't be afraid to use the knife. That ZDP is going to work really well. Um, maybe a bit hard to sharpen. Um, at least that's what I've heard. I've never had the opportunity to sharpen a ZDP 189 blade, but uh, <laughs> maybe I will pretty soon. Uh, but that being said, this is definitely a really nice collector piece for me. It's going into my MBK collection. It's going into my uh, Ray Laconico collection. So I'm happy to share my first impressions with everyone out there. So if you do have any questions about this particular knife, feel free to leave a comment below. I would love to see what you think about the Slayback Flipper. Um, gosh, it's just a gorgeous knife, and I love sharing it with you all. So I hope everyone has a great day out there, and bye bye